Hi, my guest from the Brazilian BA today have a special reference for this episode and I want to give you a hint about what are we talking today. Come on! So no one told you life was gonna be this way Your job's a joke, you're broke, your love is the away It's like you're always stuck in a sack of gear When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year I'll be there for you Hello and welcome to the Brazilian BA guest. We have different guests every week talking about something related to business analysis. And my guest today is Ryan Foster. Hello, Ryan. Thank you for coming. Thanks very much for inviting me. Ryan, I have a different kind of question for you today. One question that I have never did before or nothing similar to that. Our question is related to a TV series. What can we learn from the hit TV series Friends? I'm a fan. Are you too? A massive fan. Massive. Fan. Oh, more my wife. Um, she introduced me to it, but I think I've watched each episode about 30 times. Wow. <laughs> and what <laughs> and, can and we I wish learn? I was exaggerating. <laughs> You're not. Oh my God. <laughs> what can we learn from that? Well, I mean, to start off with, what can't we learn? There is so much you can learn from friends, and and you know, every episode I watch, it, it just it just really makes me think um, back to, to to the role that I play, and and there's so much you can learn in everyday life um, that can be applicable. And we think of it as two separate things. We think of our our work life and our outside work life, but they they, they bridge the they, you know they bridge each other at some point, and there's lessons that you can learn from everywhere. And a recent one, if I start off with one of the, the, the main ones you can learn, um, is I often struggle in projects to try and get people to understand the agile way of delivery and how you need to focus on incremental delivery um, because everyone wants to know when's it going to end, how much is it going to cost me. And the answer is I don't know. Um, a, a properly funded agile project funds a team that delivers value each, each increment until such time as business decides they're, they're happy with what they've got or um, money runs out. It's, it's simple as that. And if you look back at how Friends was filmed, and, and not just Friends, I mean most shows, when they start out, they form a pilot episode, um, which in our terms could be uh, a, a prototype. They form a prototype, they, publish, they publicize it out there, and they see what the market's reaction is. Um, and then they build on that show by show by show by show until they've got to a season. And then, you know, the executives at, at, at the company look at the, the audience ratings. Is this, is this show doing well? Does it, you know, uh, resonate with the audience? If that answer is yes, it's signed on for another show. Um, but at day one, you don't know how many shows there are. You don't know how much you're going to spend on those shows because there's just so many variables you don't know about. You don't know if it's going to be successful. You don't know if the market is going to respond well to it. You don't know um, if COVID's going to happen in the middle of a show. Uh, if we go beyond Friends, I mean, look at other TV shows, Grey's Anatomy and things like that. They couldn't just ignore COVID. They had to build it into their, into their script. So if you're sort of thinking in, 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 a, in a very set waterfall way about things, you are, are going to miss an opportunity there to bring that into your show or to do something like that. So, yeah, I really like that part of it. And that's interesting because making a TV series is different of making a movie. Mm. And if you're making a movie, you when the movie is ready and it goes to the screen, it's over. You uh, it's all the work you had to do is over, so you have no more chances to increment the product. But a TV exactly. series an increment is is an incremental product, so you have to have this agile mindset since from the beginning, so you can uh, embrace change as opportunities and, and adapt. As, yeah. as the things are, go, are, are coming. But that's very interesting. Yeah, f fully agree. I mean, just another analogy on, on the movie side of thing that I found quite interesting recently is, would you watch 
a 10 hour long movie? Your answer is probably no. Yeah. But would you watch 10 one hour series in one day? Probably on Netflix, your binge. And again, you know, the risk with a movie is less because you, you, you have an hour and a half. Um, you know, it's, it's out, it's done. Whereas with a, with a TV series, your, your budgets are more, your, your, how long it lasts is more. Your success rides on not, uh, on that, on, not on that one hour or that one and a half hours. It re relies on the show continuing for, for, for 12 seasons. And that's why so many seasons just sort of get canceled. Um, but there's a, there's a really good message in there, uh, and, I, and that's the, my new analogy when I explain to stakeholders not to think of the end, but rather to think of how you get there. Um, and, you know, alongside that, I think another big lesson that comes out of it is, is keeping things simple. Um, and, uh, this is something that strikes me about Friends. I don't know if you've ever really looked, but in the whole season of Friends, there's really three main areas that they do the show in. It's that the coffee house, then they have it in Ch uh, Chandler and Monica's uh, rooms, and then you have it in Joey's side. It's, it's only really that every now and again, you know, Ross's house comes in and then you go to Phoebe, even they go to London once in a while. But ultimately, it's quite a simple show in that they didn't need the complexity. There was no huge budget. It's, it's, it's a simple set, um, but no one notices it. You don't notice the simplicity in it. And it's because it's it just it's there the show is good on its in its own right and I, and I question a lot of the times is why do we complicate products that we work on um, both on the, the product side and on the on the way we deliver that product so the, the process and the product on the process side if we don't need a document with a header with a five page introduction why do we produce one um, and that's what agile sort of teaches you is to collaborate um, and if we, if we bring this to a more practical level, uh, if you look at acceptance criteria, say your acceptance criteria says um, the screen must be green. You, you don't also need to say the screen mustn't be red and mustn't be purple and mustn't be brown. You just need to say it must be green. Um, and often people, they, they'll go write the inverse of something um, in the acceptance criteria to be more specific, but actually it's not needed. Keep it simple. One line is enough. It's all you really need. Um, and you just need to get your point across um, and and a requirement the purpose of a requirement is to communicate something and as long as the message is received you've sent it and it's received in a good way you've done your job by, by writing a requirement by defining acceptance criteria um, and i think that's quite quite important to note it's having your mind with a lean process uh, with a lean way of working and optimizing the effort that you didn't do so uh, yeah. if you have your purpose very clear and you have your uh, 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 the value that the stakeholder wants and, and in friends we would say that the value is seeing the characters uh, interacting and, and uh, yeah. all, all the storylines that's that comes across their their, li their lives we don't really need to see them in very different places so that they could make the Exactly. the production very cheap and that's interesting yeah and i think i think you've hit a nail on the head there i mean ultimately it's not about the show is about if you look at its core value it's it's, it's to make you laugh and you can make someone laugh without having 700 scenes you don't have to have special effects and things like that you, it, it's simple and, and i think simplicity is understated um in in, in what we do a, a lot of the time um and another one, I mean, uh, even with simplicity, words like you brought up lean and, and it, I know this is, you know, we talk a lot about business analysis and, and I'd like to coin a phrase that um, has become very pop popular thanks to you and that's business analysis as a mindset. I mean, all the things we're talking about now are not specifically business analysis related. They are a mindset that you could have uh, as a business analyst or as a practitioner of business analysis or as a product manager or as a leader or as a CEO. I mean, the, these lessons are universal. Um, and another universal lesson that comes out of that, and we, we hear this all the time, everyone says it, it's a catchphrase, is know your customer. Um, but I, th well, I think people don't really, re you know, they say it, but do they actually do it? Um, and I don't think often, often we, we, we often do it. And, and I'll give you an example in Friends to bring it back to Friends is I, many people don't know that the, the episode where um, Monica and Chandler finally get together in, in um, I think they're London at the time, that was planned. The show planned that. They said, let's, let's throw in that, let's do that. But what wasn't planned is them continuing their relationship. Um, Monica was never supposed to continue her relationship with Chandler. Uh, she ended up marrying him, as, as you would know if you're a fan of the show. But 
ultimately, the, the point there is how they got to that decision is they realized that the audience, re- audience reaction to that happening and the fans that were watching the show said, this is, what, this is good, this is what we want. Um, and therefore, the show gave them more. And it's, it's a really good lesson. Um, and if you watch the reunion show, they actually speak about that, saying how the audience reaction derived what they did. And, and audience reaction is, is also something that doesn't have to be very um, analytical. You don't have to go write surveys. You don't have to do things like that. It's just literally watching them. If they laugh loud or if they, they you know, seem interested of the, the series, if you're looking at metrics. Uh, I, know, I know there's been quite a few shows that I've seen in the past where it talks about the metrics how many users watch. But if all of a sudden users start dialing in, you can see you onto something. Um, so both interacting with your customer directly as in asking questions, observing them, and just the, the more silent techniques. Um, I, I know uh, um, Andre from uh, Slovenia, he speaks about this in one of his presentations where he talks about how they, he did a project where people followed the eyes of the customers. So they looked at the eyes and where they went on the, on the app and they could track um, the users were looking to the left or to the right and they understood how to do it. So building those kind of metrics to understand how do you, um, how do you understand the customer? How do you take those things that customer isn't necessarily telling you, but you can sense or you can derive or you can test? Um, and if you think about it, Friends was just experimenting the whole time. And that's design thinking. That's business analysis. That is, that is how you do this. You have a hypothesis. The requirement that at the end of the day is simply an hypothesis. It is not an actual thing. I can't do anything with the requirement. I think Chandler and Monica being together is a good idea for the show. Let's try it, see how the audience reacts, and then deal with it. If audience doesn't like it, remove them. If audience likes it, continue with them. So a massive lesson that you can learn from that perspective. It's interesting how a lot of organizations think they know better what the customer needs and yeah. they don't don't take the time to listen to the customer or to what the customer are using any kind of technique and you listed some of them to see what the customer, how did the customer really react to their products or to their services and try to adapt to that. And, and that's a good, uh, a good learn from the TV series. Very, 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 very good. Is yeah. there another? Yeah, oh, there, there's always more. There's always more. I mean, wow. the, the other one that I think is quite interesting is um, adapting to change. Uh, it, it, we talk about it. It's, it's again another one of those catchphrases. But how often do we actually adapt to change? And and the example that I'll use from the show is many people don't know, but when um, Phoebe was pregnant in the show and she had her brother's. Twin, uh, her brother's triplets and I think everyone if you haven't watched the show that's there's nothing dodge about that <laughs> she was a surrogate for her brother and they make a lot of jokes about it in the show um, but that they wrote that into the plot because she was pregnant at the time um, and that's and that's quite interesting to me um, they were they were given a um, an issue and the issue was Phoebe's actually pregnant in real life um, it is actually more than one of the, 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 the show uh, people in the show were, were pregnant and they had to work with it in the show so that, I mean, you can't obviously have Phoebe not being pregnant and then being very visibly pregnant on the show. So they, they sort of dealt with it. And um, I think that says a lot about how we should be working um, in the modern environment. And COVID is really, again, I use it as an example because it has thrown a lot at us. No one would have predicted this, except Bill Gates, apparently. He can predict it. Um, <laughs> but the average, average person didn't predict this happening. So if you'd built your, if you were so rigid in your design, so rigid in, in, in your requirements, so rigid in what you expected this product to be, um, and you were thrown something like COVID, you would be on the back foot. You wouldn't know what to do, how to build, where to go, um, because you, you, you're so, you were thinking so far forward. And again, that goes down actually back to point one. Um, what are you going to build in four months? I don't really know. Um, I might have a, a product roadmap if you're, you know, if you're doing product, product management or business analysis. I might understand where we want to head, but what's happening in six months, seven months, eight months, that is um, ideas. It's, a, it's a, a thinking and that can change at any point. What's important is what am I doing right now? Um, what is the next feature coming out that is going to go release next month? What is the next item that we're going to do? And, and I think, you know, we really lo- need to be not only, not only uh, adaptable to change, but welcoming change. Because change shows that you, you can react to your customers, you know what's going on, and, and I think that's a, a massive lesson um, from the show itself. It's, it's not about having no plans. It's, it's mm. having plans that can be adaptable 
right? Exactly. So, of, of course, if you're designing a TV series, you're thinking about what is going to happen in the future with mm. your characters, but those things are not supposed to be right in stone. So exactly. that's something that can change if you see the opportunities or if things happen, like mm. in the example you did with, with the, the actress getting pregnant, you, you have to adapt and you must be open to that. And it, it, it was very funny because we have a lot of stories with Phoebe's kids and, and the triplets and so they were very clever and very... Uh, 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 sorry, I forgot the word. Uh, creative, <laughs> creative <laughs> about it. So you have, you must have so. space for creativity in your in your process of building a product. Very you interesting, have... Ryan. And you know the, the the creativity comes in the problem solving side of things. Is um, to me as a BA or um, you know someone practicing business analysis. That my, my, the most exciting thing I can do is be given a problem. Give me a problem, I'll come up with something. I'll think of something. I'll, you know, that's what we really enjoy doing. And that's what, that's what happened in the show. They were given a problem. They said, how do we deal with this? This is how we deal with it. Um, that, in that case, it's funny. In the work environment, not always as funny. But uh, um, that's why we, we watch Friends. Yes, and it was a lovely show. And it was very nice to talk to you today, Ryan. Thank you very much for giving us this the, uh, these insights about a TV show that we all love. Thanks so much for inviting me. I had a, I had a lot of fun. Right. See you soon. Cheers. <laughs>